Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Hidden Flame here, and before I start my final round of the CWC tournament prediction, or not prediction, just results, um, I want to uh, mention one thing. Yesterday, uh, that would be the 13th of September, I learned that Kota Ibushi and Zack Sabre Jr. did not sign contracts with WWE. So before I could get a post out, I said I was going to change my uh, predictions. But someone told me that with these brackets, you cannot change your official verdict. So I'm going to show you guys what my official first bracket was. Okay, so in the first bracket uh, with a Grand Mahalik here, or Grand Matak, sorry, I have correctly guessed the semifinals. I had Gallagher going over to Nawo, and I had Matalik going over to Jiri with Matalik, I mean, Matalik going up against, going over uh, Akira Tazawa, no, uh, Jack Gallagher. So I got this one correct. So in this bracket, I had Kendrick going over Nice, Obushi going over Alexander, and uh, Bushi going over Kendrick. So in this one, I had completely 100% corrected this bracket. In the next bracket, I originally had Saber defeating Gulak, Hoho Lin defeating Noam Dar, and then Saber defeating Hoho Lin to advance to the semifinals. And in the final bracket, I originally had Gargano going or defeating TJ Perkins. I had Swan defeating Dor Dorado, and then I had Gargano defeating Swan. Okay, as you guys can see, I really didn't do too well in my original predictions. Um, I got a 100% in bracket two, but that's about it. So we got Ma Metallic, Abushi, and Zack Sabre Jr. as my original semifinal predictions. But I am glad to see that the WWE bracket, bracket four, um, they didn't advance and they let other people shine when it comes to this tournament. So the first match we had this evening, we had Grand Matalik versus Zack Sabre Jr. Now, when it comes to this match, there was lots of action, I mean, fast action uh, from Grand Matalik. We had a lot of slow submissions when it came to Zack Sabre Jr. Um, Matalik started the match going with a drop kick, a suicide dive, a swanton dive from the from a springboard formation. And yeah, it started pretty quick for Metalik, but then Saber got the upper hand, started putting a bunch of submissions on him, uh, focusing on his arm, then his legs, trying to slow the, the fast luchador down. And it didn't really work. Um, Metalik did a bunch of really cool top rope maneuvers. There was one particular where he crotched Zack Sabre Jr., um, jumped it into a Hurricanrana. He went for a pin on it, didn't work. Sabre Jr. gets up, tries to do a European uppercut, only for it to be reversed into the Metalik, Metal, Metal Lake, Metal Leak driver. I can't think what it was called. Forget him the pin. Now, this was one of my theories when going into this match, that since Zack Sabre Jr. did not sign with WWE, that he was going to lose the finals, I mean, the semifinals of the tournament, because you can't really have someone not on contract winning the, well, winning the tournament. Next, we had Kota Ibushi versus TJ Perkins. Now, if you watched my last video, you could tell I'm not a fan of Ibushi. Um, but he was another person who didn't sign and okay let me just first um, tell you what my notes said here so this match was slower uh, Perkins just kept going for the knee bar on Ibushi and Ibushi kept doing his lots of um, so there was a What's pretty much solidified the match at the very beginning there was a triangle moonsault that Ibushi tried to do to Perkins but he reversed it and he hit the ground outside um, and looked like he got injured from it 
And from that moment on, Perkins kept going after Ibushi's leg and knees. Um, so while Ibushi was going for drop kicks, Perkins was going for submissions. And there was a beautiful, uh, gosh, what's the name of it? The Golden Triangle Moonsault from the inside of the It was just wonderful. Uh, went to the light and Perkins found that he uh, was able to lock at one of the into our. There was a kick from Perkins as Ubushi went back up. But from there, uh, Kota Ubushi, after getting kicking out of a two count, went up to do a Phoenix Splash. Missed. Perkins went for a third knee bar and modified it a little bit into a TF. That's John Cena's uh, signature move. And the biggest upset of the tournament, Kota Ibushi tapped out. Now, as you can tell, my original uh, bracket is com been completely broken. Um, the only person that I have going into the finals is Grand Matalik. But the main question is, did Matalik win? Now, before I give my information on this match, because I really don't have notes on it because it was just too great of a match to look away. Let me show you guys something that happened right before the match started. Say hello to the WWE Cruiserweight Championship and my god does that thing look beautiful. This was brought in by Triple H. Right before the match started, the King of King, or not the King of Kings, the uh, the game music started playing. He came out, gave a speech, showed this pretty thing off. I've never been one for purple, but who boy does that look pretty. Anyway, with that on the line, this match became the cruiserweight title match with a 16 minute time limit. So the match at hand. So with this match, um, I couldn't get much notes in, so I'm gonna try to get as best I can. There was lots of submissions from Perkins, Grand Matalik's um, speed and high flying abilities proved almost Perkins downfall he Perkins looked really tired in this match but he did just come off of a match against Kota Ibushi now there was a match before just to give the fans something to watch while the um, participants were resting up um, it was DIY which is do it yourself which is the team of Tommaso Ciampa versus Johnny Gargano and the team of Cedric Alexander and Noam Dar. Uh, they put on a really good match while the guys were resting with DIY coming out on top and they looked really well doing it. So let's hope they bring that tag team to the Ross. Ross. But um, while, I mean, just I said that just because it looked like Perkins was tired. Um, he apparently he didn't get enough rest like Metalik did. But from what I noticed, Grand Matalik was actually the person who did all the spots. He did a high dive over the top rope Frankensteiner to the outside. He followed it up with by running back into the ring, doing another hurdle dive, um, got Perkins back in, did a springboard elbow. There was a heck of a lot of super kicks. Uh, ones that would make even Shawn Michaels uh, blush, <laughs> I guess. But uh, it looked like because TJ Perkins went for the knee bar a bunch of times and working on the knee, uh, when Ma Grand Matalik went for a champion, I mean, went for his driver, uh, it looked like he injured himself on the execution. 
and he tried it a couple times he tried doing it on the top rope he tried uh, another time but it looked like his knee gave out a little so in the end it was Perkins hitting a third knee bar and making Grand Matalik tap to the knee bar and here you go everybody your new WWE Cruiserweight Champion TJ Perkins now I don't know much about this guy but from what I've seen of him in the tournament I thought he was amazing he is going to make I mean, bring the Cruiserweight division as its um, torchbearer to Raw he is going to show up with the following people. I'm going to put them on the screen now to show you who has signed with the WWE. Okay, the people who will be going to Raw will be Akira Tozawa, Jack Gallagher, Grand Matalik, Noam Dar, The Brian Kendrick, Cedric Alexander, TJ Perkins, Johnny Gargano, Tommaso Ciampa, and Rich Swan. These 10 men will be joining the cruiserweights who are already on Raw. Those such as Jinder Mahal. I don't know if Seth Rollins is in that cruiserweight uh, position. I want to say the Shining Stars and maybe Enzo Amore. Uh, we'll only see, we'll see that in the future probably on Monday of what the exact division is going to look like but these 10 men have joined WWE to do its cruiserweight classic now let me know about your guys' brackets did you have the winners did you have uh, see who uh, was going to win let me know in the comments below if you uh, I mean who you thought was going to win this most people, I'm sure, was probably going to be uh, Kota Ibushi. But, I, th as I was going to say before, once I learned that they didn't, I mean, they kept refusing to sign contracts, that they weren't going to be a part of, of the finals. So, I'm sorry I couldn't get that uh, message out to you guys sooner. But there you go. That is the winner of the WWE First Annual Cruiserweight Tournament. I will see you guys next time. Please like, subscribe, share, and I will see you guys in my next video.